Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's go back and take another look at the level of significance and how it affects hypothesis testing. Well, remember that again, the level of significance is something that we set ahead of time for a specific purpose. And let's read the statement here. It says, essentially, the level of significance represents the probability that our decision to reject the null hypothesis is wrong. In other words, we make a decision to reject an all hypothesis, and that decision is a wrong decision. That's called a type 1 error. And the level of significance is the probability that will make that type 1 error. So, of course, we want to reduce that type 1 error. We want to not make that error. We don't want to reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is true. So, let's do an example. Let's assume that our test statistic is equal to 2. And we have three examples, three graphs here that represent a level of significance of 0.10, which is 10%, a level of significance of 0 0.05, which is 5%, and a level of significance of 0 0.01, which is 1%. Notice that the smaller the level of significance, the smaller the critical region becomes, and the less likely that the test statistic will fall within that critical region. Notice that as the level of significance decreases, that the boundary where the critical region moves, can, moves further and further to the right, which means that our Z score will be a greater number, the Z score for that initial point on the critical region. And when T is larger than Z, so when the test statistic falls within the critical region, then we reject the null hypothesis. In this case, we're 10% that the probability that a decision is wrong is 10%. Hmm, can you live with that? Can you say, you made a decision, but there's a 10% chance that your decision was wrong, and you say, well, maybe I can't live with that. That's too much of a probability. I want to make it smaller. So let's then go to a level of significance of 0.05 or 5%. And again, notice that now our z-score of the beginning of that boundary of the critical region is now a bigger number from 1.288 is now grown to 1.645 but since t or test statistic is equal to 2 it still puts it to the right in the critical region and so therefore we're still going to reject our null hypothesis and now there's only a 5% probability that that was a wrong decision so let's say that you still don't like the 5%, you want to make it even tighter, you want to be more sure than that, that you didn't make the wrong decision, and so now you change your level of significance to 0.01 or 1%. Notice the critical region has shrunk again, but now the beginning boundary of the critical region, the z-score, has now grown to 2.327, and your test statistic is smaller than that. So then you end up failing to reject the null hypothesis. Now, Yes, what you're saying is that, well, I, I want to reject it. I don't want to, to um, uh, I, I don't want to reject it because I'm not sure enough to reject it. 1% probability that you made a wrong decision to reject it, that's a very small probability. And so therefore, if you want to be really sure, in this case, you end up not rejecting your null hypothesis. But what if the null hypothesis was actually false? and you should have rejected it. So let's go over here and take a look at this. But the smaller the level of significance, the greater the probability that we fail to reject the null hypothesis when we should have rejected it. That's called a type 2 error. So here we may be in a situation where the null hypothesis should have been rejected and we didn't reject it. Hmm. We made it too tough to be able to reject the null hypothesis and we end up not rejecting it and in this case perhaps the null hypothesis was something we should have rejected it was a false statement the null hypothesis and we should have rejected it but we didn't because we want to be really sure that we didn't reject it or we want to be really sure if we rejected it that we made the right decision so now you realize that you need to strike a balance between being kind of sure that you rejected and you made the right decision and not get to the point where you're not rejecting it when you should have rejected it and ended up with a type 2 error. 
So it's a balancing act. Otherwise, we can make it really tight and say, oh, I'm not going to reject until I'm really, 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 really sure. But that's not necessarily the right thing to do. And that's why typically a level of significance of about 5% is kind of a common thing to use. Sometimes 10%. 1% is not as common because that makes it really tight and you increase your probability of a type 2 error where you don't reject the null hypothesis when you should have. So hopefully this gives you a good feel for the meaning and the usefulness of the level of significance and where you want to set it to have a reasonable probability not to make a mistake and to do the right, make the right decision. You can't have it all one way or the other way. You can have a strike a balance between the two potential errors, and that is how it's done. That's better, right?